Hey guys, how's it going? This is Natinado, and welcome back to the second and final part of The Sandman. If you haven't heard the first part yet, here's an annotation to get there, and there'll also be a link in the description. Now as always, turn out the lights, get comfortable, and let the story continue. Of course, he was alone. There was no man on the ceiling. He checked twice. Maybe it crawled out and was waiting for him in the hall. But when he checked there, the coast was clear once again. It should have been a relief, but it was not. After all, it had to be in here somewhere. If the ceiling was not its trick, that just meant it was something else. Something even more strange, even more clever. He went to Daniel's room. He had not stopped checking on him at night, like he always had. This time though, rather than open the door, he listened at first, pressed his ear against the grain of the cheap wood, and held his breath. Terrified that he would hear a skittering sound on the other side of the barrier, What he heard instead shocked him more. Daniel was talking to someone. James recoiled for a second, and then, when he'd caught his breath, he all but kicked the door in. Daniel was already awake, indeed, sitting up in bed, but he was not saying anything now. The light flashed on, and James stalked halfway into the room before stopping suddenly torn. What did he want more? To confirm that his son could speak again? Or to find whomever he was speaking to? The creak of a door hinge settled the matter for him. He ran to the closet and threw it open. There was nothing inside. Or at least, nothing that shouldn't be there. He swept aside the clothes on their hangers but nothing was hiding between them. Then he dragged the toy box out and emptied it onto the floor. Nothing. He combed along the bare walls and floor, and yes, the ceiling, pushing aside every last bit of rubbish and stray knick-knack so that he could be sure, absolutely sure, that nothing was hiding. All the while, Daniel watched him, After a few minutes, James was panting and covered in sweat, and the closet was bare, and there were neither intruders nor answers inside. It struck him as funny. Somehow, and he started to laugh, very quietly. He kicked his son's toys out of the way as he went to sit down on the bed, dazed. He became aware, all at once, of several things. First being that he had not slept in days, and was nowhere near his right mind. The second was how close he'd come to really losing it, for good. Tomorrow he decided that they would both sleep until the afternoon, and when they did wake up, he and Daniel would get out of this creaky old house. No more staying cooped up like prisoners, and no more checkups and no more dreams about monsters. He would even take the bars off the windows. It was time to get back to living like real people again. It was time to... James saw it when he brushed a hand through Daniel's hair. He pulled Daniel, a little too roughly, closer. His son acquiesced to the examination without fidgeting or complaint as James poured the side of his head, hoping that what he was seeing would somehow stop being apparent. He stared and stared until he ached from not blinking, but there was no denying what was right in front of his eyes. Daniel was missing an ear. No, he realized with mounting nausea. Both ears. There was no injury, 
No incision, no mark where they should have been. Simply smooth, blank flesh. As blank as Daniel's quiet, unperturbed demeanor. Daniel swept him up in his arms and ran into the hall. He was not sure where he was going or what he meant to do when he got there. He just knew that there was now nothing more important than getting his son out of that house. But their path was cut off. A naked man sat in the hallway with his back to them. No, not a man. James recognized its stretched limbs and stooped shoulders. The pale thing squatted on its haunches, rocking back and forth like it was palsied. It almost seemed to be in pain. James hugged his son closer and backed away. Then he heard Daniel's voice. Daddy? James turned to Daniel and he heard the voice again. Daddy? But Daniel's lips hadn't moved. James looked back at the hunched figure. Its head jerked when it talked, like a tick. Hello, Daddy. James's mouth went dry. It took several tries before he could speak. Don't call me that. It is this voice's name for you. Go away. Leave my family alone. But I am your family. The longer it talked, the more the voice became distorted and blurred. An icy feeling nestled in James's stomach. Who are you? Someone who came to visit. Why here? You invited me. James's head thudded against the inside of his chest. Ah, <clears throat> James's heart thudded against the inside of his chest. Why? I had something you wanted. James licked his dry lips. You're lying. You don't have anything I want. I want you to leave. Leave and never come back. Who is Daniel's mother? James blinked. What? Who is Daniel's mother? What the hell kind of question is that? How old is Daniel? James blinked again. The thing's voice caused a pinching pain in the center of his forehead. Stop asking me these things! When is Daniel's birthday? I don't know. What is his middle name? Shut up. What was his first word? I said, shut up. James wanted to tear the thing apart with his bare hands. Only the heaviness of Daniel in his arms kept him where he was. You were alone. You wanted a son, so I made one for you. James's hands began to shake. That doesn't make any sense. Made out of what? Out of myself. James's stomach turned over. But now... I need those parts back. Daniel picked at James's shoulder to get his attention. Something was strange about Daniel's face. Danny, open your eyes. Daniel scrunched his eyes shut tighter. 
Open your eyes. Danny. Danny. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Daniel shook his head, trying to refuse, but he couldn't hold it forever. Eventually, his eyelids flicked up, and James saw the truth. Daniel's eyes were gone. James almost dropped him. For a second, he wanted to throw his son down so that he could stop looking into those empty holes in his face. Daniel opened his mouth, as if to speak. But of course, he had no voice. He is coming back. To be part of me, again. No. 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 Give him back. Give him back! I cannot. It has been too long. I warned you this would happen. You're lying. You're lying. You're a fucking liar. Give me my son back. Give him back. I do not lie. I warned you. He could not exist forever, but you do not remember. You can only remember what I want you to. You forget all the times we have talked. Daniel felt like a doll or an empty bag. His hair was falling out, disappearing before it touched the ground. His hands vanished into his sleeves, and his feet rolled up inside his pants cuffs. James cradled the tiny, shapeless thing, tears streaming down his face. Soon he held a pile of empty clothes, and then those two were gone. He looked around the house. Toys disappeared. Photos vanished from their frames. Daniel's little shoes were no longer by the door. James turned toward Daniel's room and confronted a wall where the door should be. He groped the blank surface, fingertips scrambling. He hit his head against the wall. The pain didn't feel real. Why did you do this? It was what you wanted. And I learned... So much. This is impossible. People will ask. People will wonder. The police, the hospitals, the people in the neighborhood. They have already forgotten him. They only remembered what I wanted them to. Like you. James pressed his hands to his aching skull. Will I at least remember him after this? You can try, but your mind will fail you. Now that everything he was is part of me again. James sat on the floor, looking at the blank wall. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw the thing creep toward him and even felt its wet hand on his shoulder, but he did not look at it. If I won't remember any of this, he said, then why tell me? Because a father should know. And then James was alone. Abigail wondered about... <coughs> Abigail worried about James sometimes. When they met a year ago, he said that he'd never been married and he'd never had kids. But there was a certain pained expression he assumed when he said that last part. Abigail knew that look. She'd met parents who'd lost children before. You learn to recognize it. And there were other things about him that worried her too. Sometimes she would find him staring at a particular spot on the wall, brow furrowed in concentration. 
he did not seem to realize he was doing it. And of course, there was the insomnia, and the sleepwalking to consider too. Yes, there was lots to worry about, but she loved him all the same. James still said he'd never had kids, and neither had she. She'd long wanted one, but it was impossible. And she worried that James wouldn't stay with a woman who couldn't be a mother, though he constantly assured her that it was not so. There were times, and more and more often of late, they were the nights when James took to sleepwalking. And even Abigail imagined that she heard strange, scuttling noises in the house and saw impossible shapes in dark corners. When she thought she would do anything, absolutely anything, if it meant having a little daughter for she and James to raise. And at those moments, she became truly afraid. But she never knew why. Oh, 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 oh,